Welcome to Inside Analog Photography Radio Program. I'm your host, Scott Shepard, and of course, the Inside Analog Photography Radio Program is all about traditional process photography. We talk about instant photography. We talk about black and white. We talk about color film. We talk about dry plate, wet plate, you name it, alternate printing processes, everything going on in analog photography. And of course, the Inside Analog Photography Radio Program is brought to you by Fujifilm over at www.fujifilmusa.com forward slash professional. They have beautiful C41 color neg, black and white, color chrome, and of course, instant. Instant film rocks. These guys have so much great things going on right now with instant film. Of course, they have the pack film in three and a quarter by four and a quarter and four by five. Color, black and white, high speed black and white, but you know what's even cooler? They have the Instex cameras and film. The Instex Wide is in the country, available everywhere. And of course, right now, brand new, the Instex Mini is now in the U.S. They have cameras. They have film. This Instex Mini is two and a half by three and a half. It's the size of a business card. This is really fun stuff. You got to check it out. www.fujifilmusa.com forward slash professional, making life more colorful. Our friends at Richard Photo Lab, the place to send all your film to get developed. Proofs, you name it. They got a great workflow going. www.richardphotolab.com. DR5. For the most unbelievable proprietary process to turn your black and white film into positives, into chrome. You won't believe until you get your film back as a piece of chrome will blow your mind. The dynamic range, the latitude, it's just unbelievable stuff. Definitely check it out. www.dr5.com. Iger Studios. Lenny Iger, the place to have high-resolution scans done. You know, a lot of people now are shooting analog. They're using a high-resolution scan. They're making digital negatives on an inkjet. Or maybe they're going straight to an inkjet output. But they're making digital negatives and they're printing contact prints. They're doing all the stuff. You need to get a high-resolution scan. They're using an Aztec Premier, 8,000 PPI, adjustable aperture. They can give you scans that are basically grain-free. They can adjust it for every kind of film out there. This is crazy stuff going on with Lindy Iger and the guys at Iger Studios. Check them out, igerstudios.com. And, of course, Upstrap at upstrap-pro.com. The camera strap that will not slide off your shoulder. Our media partners www.apug.org, the Analog Photography User Group, the place on the web for all things analog process. This is a great place to learn, to share information, to get tips and tricks, the community for analog photography, www.apug.org, and of course, our photographic philanthropy partner, George Eastman House International Museum of Photography and Film, www.geh.org, the place to go to find out about the history of traditional analog photography. These people are keeping this alive. They have over 7,000 cameras in their museum of everything that's ever been made, including the Hasselblads that were shot on the moon. You name it, they have the collection. This is a great way to help support. You can be a member of George Eastman House organization. They have a lot of great things going on, but this is something you can do to help give back to photography, to help keep traditional analog photography alive for generations to come. Definitely check them out, www.geh.org. On today's Inside Analog Photography radio program, we're going to have with us Jeremy Center. Jeremy is a photographer out of Seattle, Washington, and he's done a very cool set of portraits using the Fuji Instax instant camera. He made some modification, hooked up an external flash, running it in the studio strobes, and you won't believe this cool stuff that he's been doing with the Fuji Film Instax camera and film. Jeremy, how you doing today? I'm doing great, thank you. Thanks for joining us here on Inside Analog Photo. Great to see your beautiful photography. You have some really cool instant stuff. You've got a lot of great stuff going on. Jeremy, what got you into photography? How long have you been doing this? And let's talk about your background here a bit. Well, I've been taking pictures at an amateur level for 10 years or so. Just kind of something I felt I needed to do. The analogy I like to use a lot is kind of like how some people want kids. I woke up one day and really wanted to take pictures. Started off with a little 35 millimeter point and shoot, and when I got beyond that, I went out and got myself a little Canon AE1 program, and then kind of went from there. But really, what's got me into the kind of work I do now is the Strobus community. Very, very cool. David Hobby has a pretty neat deal going on over there. Oh, yeah. Uh, I do a lot of work with Flash. In fact, it's one of the reasons why I hacked the Instax was to try to get some off camera Flash. And, and really, it changed my life, both Flickr, I like to say, and Strobus. It really has made me a better photographer and really love light and what I can do with it. So when you started off your photography, have you always been shooting analog stuff? Are you shooting digital still too or mainly analog? Well, when I started, I was shooting analog. 
I purposely, I think it was probably about 10 years ago or so, I purposely went out and got an old school camera. Then it was all manual, just so I can learn the fundamentals of how it worked and how to make a good exposure. And I was shooting C41 process black and white. And thanks to Costco, I was able to shoot a lot of film, both film and processing, and get pretty decent feedback. It's not digital, but one-hour photo is pretty quick. Mainly now I shoot digital. I'm a Canon shooter. I shoot with a 5D Mark II. I just bought a Mamiya RZ67. I haven't had a chance to use it yet. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm in the process of moving, and so my life is a little bit of a shambles right now. Moving Um, is definitely a major pain. Yeah, it definitely is. So with the RZ, are you looking forward to going back to shooting some more C41 black and white? Do you want to shoot chrome? What are you looking forward to? Or maybe even Fuji Pack film on an RZ back, but why would you go with the RZ? What brought you back to say, I want to buy a more professional, high-end, medium-format film camera? Well, medium-format has a certain quality about it that's really tough to put a finger on as to say what creates the medium-format feel. And with the rise of digital, old film cameras are pretty inexpensive on the second-hand market. So I picked up body with a 110 lens and I think a viewfinder and a couple backs for about $500. A friend of mine shoots one and he handed me down a bunch of different kinds of film and I'm just going to kind of go through it. What I'm looking for is just that extra little something that when you look at a medium format portrait, you know it was taken with a medium format camera. So is this mainly what you like to shoot most as people? Do you like doing portraiture the best? Yeah, I do. Well, I originally started off 10 years ago doing street photography, and I never thought I'd actually be shooting fashion or portraits, but I just kind of evolved into that. But yeah, I'm a people shooter, and I primarily like shooting on location if I can't. I rarely do studio work. So tell me about this series of photography that you did here with the Instex camera that I think is very, very cool. I'm assuming you probably did some kind of modification to the camera itself. The images that are on your website are just stunning to think that this was produced with an instant camera. Yeah, I was actually surprised by the results. I kind of came up to the ranks, so to speak, with our local photography club. We call ourselves Seattle Flickers. And it's more of a social community built around cameras and photography. The Instax suddenly became popular, and people were doing some really neat stuff with them. With Polaroid going away, you're not going to get your hands on any kind of film. With the Polaroid project, you're going to pay an arm and a leg, 10 sheets of film. So the Instax caught my eye because it was a relatively affordable camera, and it had that nice, foolish quality about it, but it made really good pictures. As a strobist, I said, how can I modify this to use off-camera flash? So I kind of did some thinking. My background, actually, I'm a degreed electrical engineer. I've been an aerospace engineer for 10 years now. I'm kind of making the transition from one field to the other thanks to the economy. I thought, well, I already have pocket wizards. I know I wanted to use pocket wizards because radio transmitters are the most reliable that I've experienced. So I basically took a, one of those little optical slaves that you can get anywhere for 15 bucks. It's got a little plastic lens in the front, and I just kind of hacked it off, glued it to the front flash of the Instax, and I had an instant hop shoe. Of course, the way I did it, it was kind of destructive, and I can't really use it outside unless it's a super bright day and it wasn't going to use the flash anyway. But so after that, I kind of did some metering. Fuji says they use an F11 lens, but according to my meter, it's more like F6.3. So I kind of figured out the metering, and I know if I'm in a studio environment, I just set my lights to F6.3, and I can shoot digital or Instax just by picking up the camera. Wow, that's cool. I have an internet persona. My alter ego is called Oglethorpe. It's kind of how I'm known in the Flickr community and the Strobus community. And I did this project I called Oglethorpe's Portrait Parade. And basically what I did was I struck upon a lighting style that I really liked. I'm really heavily influenced by Annie Leibovitz. I like her lighting style. I struck upon something very similar to that. and decided, you know what I'm going to do? Now that I think I've got it right, I'm going to invite almost everybody I know over to my apartment on one weekend, and I'm going to shoot them. So I sent out an email to just about everybody I knew, and I got a pretty healthy response. I shot 20-plus portraits on the weekend between two days. And what I would do is I would shoot them in digital first, and then I would shoot them with the Instax. So basically, I get the shot I wanted in digital, and then just basically repeat it on Instax. That way, I got the instant feedback from the digital, and I didn't have to waste a lot of film to get the exposure I wanted. I shot Chase Jarvis that way. I was lucky enough to be invited to a studio to photograph him as part of my project. And unfortunately, I don't have his image up yet because I disconnected my scanner before I could get it up. It's something as long as I have a studio and I have controlled light, I can shoot all day long. 
Well, this is very cool to be able to take this piece that you grafted onto the Instex. Now, I guess this would work either way. I mean, you've completely eliminated the flash on the Instex because whatever puts out has been sort of wrapped around the sensor. So it triggers off yeah. a hot shoe, and then you're firing off a set of regular studio strobes with the pocket wizard. Yeah, my guess was if I could tell the camera to think it's completely dark, it's going to want to fire the flash. But there's also a flash button on the thing that will have the flash on all the time. So I don't really know what the ambient's doing, because I don't know what the shutter speed is on the Instax, because it's kind of random. It depends on whatever the lighting condition is. But if I'm in a situation where it's essentially dark and I need F8 light at 100, then I'm pretty reliable, can reliably get the light to do what I want and get a nice portrait. Now, if you took the Instex out into the environment outside of the studio, even though if you're shooting with some outside lighting, or you've been pretty much leaving the Instex internally indoors? I just leave it indoors because, like I said, I don't have control over the shutter speed, which would give me control over the ambient. So when I take a meter in a regular camera, whether it's digital or analog, I take a meter outside and I know I want to shoot at F8 or F6.3, and I know or I want to shoot it over the ambient shutter speed to get a good exposure. I don't have both controls with the Instax, so I have to pretty much make sure it's dark. So there's no ambient bleed. One time, a friend of mine was doing some portraits, and he had a big setup, and he was using a lot of natural light. At least in the building, there was a lot of natural light flooding in, and it just overexposed everything because the settings I had used were such that whatever the daylight was just washed everything out. So when you're shooting the Instax portraits, you actually go dark, fire off, and the only light that's in that photograph is from your strobes. Yes, pretty much. I haven't really encountered any ambient bleed. The portraits I shot at the weekend project, I have a small apartment, probably about 600 square feet, and basically just set up a backdrop over the windows, and then I set up a blind over the other two windows. And I set up a backdrop in front of one and a blind in front of the other. The only lights in the place are from the modeling lights from the strobes I use. So do you leave the modeling light on, or do you turn that stuff off before you fire? I leave it on. I'm using white lightning products, and they have a function where they'll turn the modeling light off, you fire the strobe, and then we'll turn it back on to let you know that the strobe is recharged. Okay, very cool. What a great hack. I mean, this photography is beautiful, and I think that it's difficult. And I'm sure you played with the Instex prior than making this modification, but as you well know, it's a challenge sometimes to get everything perfect with the Instex. I mean, that's one thing that makes it so fun. Yeah, exactly. But I think with the way you've been able to modify this and actually use the flash from the Instex to fire off this pocket wizard, this is pretty cool. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Just to note, I did have a workup on my blog about how to do it, but I believe in my Flickr account, a lot of the photos were broken. The links to the photos were broken. broken. So I have to fix that. But for those who are handy with a soldering iron, I have a friend who was able to actually go inside the camera and connect the strobe and basically have an electronic hot shoe that he connects his pocket wizards to so you can still use the camera and you don't have to make the modification to start. Basically, I was heavy-handed. I was like a bull in a china shop. I wanted to use it for this specific purpose, and I didn't want to have to go experiment. So I just said, well, how's the easiest, cheapest way I can get from point A to point B and not really care about going outside with this thing? Wow, so I guess if you went internal, then you could actually bypass the flash bulb itself, get the flash sync off of what it's going on, and then put a switch on it and have it work normal, or click a switch and have it come out to what, like an eighth-inch mini jack, and you can just plug it in your pocket wizard. Yeah, I think that's what my friend did. He just basically figured out where the flash signals were, at least the flash trigger signals, and he tapped onto those, and it's on the circuit card someplace. And so he actually has a little pigtail with a one eighth inch jack that he just connects his pocket wizard to. So if you're looking for a cleaner, more efficient way and still want to use your camera outside, as it was originally intended to use, then that's probably the way to go. But if you're just looking for a gorilla hack, just find one of those $15 optical things, cut off the front and glue it onto the front of your flash. Now, do you think the optical sensor would also work if you left it intact and just kept the sensor close somewhere outside of the frame and would still fire the stuff off right, or there's probably too much of a delay? Well, what I originally tried to do was I tried to basically just Velcro it on so I could take it off when I wanted to use the insects normally. There wasn't enough support. Basically, I had this thing duct tape onto my insects, and after a couple of uses, the weight of the pocket was just kind of make the thing flop around, and it just wasn't sturdy. So I just kind of bought some two-part epoxy and called it good. Well, I think that's what's great about the Instex is the cameras are $40, 50 So Yeah, exactly. Now is what you need to do is you need to hack one and put half of it on the back of some modified back on the back of your Mamiya and be able to have a Mamiya RZ67 with an Instex back would be cool. Yeah, that's a little bit beyond my skill, I think. 
it can't be done with a baseball bat. It's a little too sophisticated for me. But yeah, there's a big toy camera community here in Seattle. Our local photo store, Lasers Camera, is putting on a whole gun contest right now. They've really responded well to the toy camera community. They're getting all kinds of different toy cameras, and the Fuji Insects was the big one a while back. So every day there's some kind of new modification. Now also with the new RZ, you can get a Polaroid back for it. So now you can actually start shooting Fuji Pack film with your RZ. It'll be pretty cool. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of looking forward to. I kind of want to try, actually, I just basically want to try using it first. I bought it like two months ago, and I had to go to California for a couple months for some family business. And I took it with me, hoping I could take some portraits, but it just kind of sat in the bag the whole time. Hopefully after the movie is taken care of, I can invite some friends over and move it into a nice big artist loft. So I have plenty of room and space, space to shoot. So hopefully I can get some practice using it. Yeah, I think this is great photography, Jeremy, and a very unique use of the Instex. It just goes to show that with a little bit of ingenuity, you made this thing make some really cool, beautiful instant portraits. This is cool stuff. Thank you very much. The Strobus community is really big on a lot of do-yourself ethic and how can you use what you have to make better pictures with. The old Strobus motto was, less gear, more brain, better light. And that really is the thing behind what I did with the insects was, well, here's this $50 camera. How can I make it so it puts out beautiful photos? using just small plastic throwaway tools, what I have. I'm not going out and buying a $39,000 Hasselblad. No, I think that just goes to show the quality of this film stock itself. But it's not so much the camera itself that is all cool, especially for the price you can't beat it. But really, the film stock is what's there. And I mean, with the combination of what you did and the lighting and the way the film is and the latitude it has and its dynamic range, it just goes to make some really cool portraits. And what's great is it spits out the top of the camera. It's done. Yeah, I know. It's wonderful. It's like there's 1960 in your little plastic camera. People ask me about it. I say it's kind of like Fisher-Price meets Polaroid. It is cool stuff. So what are you looking forward to moving on into the future here? You're going to have this new gig going at your loft. You're going to have more room to shoot. What are you looking for photographically wise to move forward, Jeremy, and do more analog photography, maybe more instant work? What's your thoughts here moving forward? Well, I'm at a transition point. I've been a pretty strong amateur for quite a while and kind of moved into the semi-pro area. And I really have had my sights set on the commercial market for quite a while. I'm looking at people like Andy Leibowitz, David LaChapelle. I'd like to be mentioned in the same breath eventually, sometime in my life. So I like portraits. I like fashion. I like mixing the two. I like creating dynamic photos. And basically, I'm a people photographer, and I try to create dynamic, engineered images that are unique and just have a completely different feel than what you're going to see anywhere else. Yeah, this stuff is beautiful and really cool work, and I definitely look forward to chatting with you some more. You get the RZ going, get some pack film through the back of that thing, I think you're going to dig it even more so. But it's just really cool to see what you've been able to do with this Instex and these beautiful portraits. We look forward to your website being spruced back up so we can actually check out how you made these modifications. But this is just beautiful photography, and I do really appreciate you joining us today, Jeremy, to talk about this, to get a little bit of insight into your photography and yourself, and this is really cool. Well, Scott, thank you very much for having me. It's been a privilege. Well, there you go. Jeremy Sinner. Beautiful work. Great to see him take this Instex camera, do a modification, put his sensor on, hook his Instex strobes in the studio, and make these beautiful instant portraits. This is really cool stuff. Everybody can do this. There's no reason why you can't. You can make this cool instant photography in your studio. These are one-off pieces of artwork that you can give to your client to take with them. They'll feel happy when they leave. You can do a lot of stuff with it. It just goes to show what you can do with a little bit of ingenuity and fun, and this is great stuff. Definitely got to check out his website. The Inside Analog Photography Radio Program is brought to you by Fujifilm, making life more colorful over at www.fujifilmusa.com. Our friends at Richard Photo Lab at richardphotolab.com. DR5 over at www.dr5.com. Iger Studios over at igerstudios.com. Upstrap at upstrap-pro.com. And, of course, our media partners, APUG, the Analog Photography User Group over at www.apug.org, our photography philanthropy partners, George Eastman House International Museum of Photography and Film over at www.geh.org. I've been your host, Scott Shepard, here on Inside Analog Photography Radio. We'll be back next week with more great analog photography.